Okay, uh, we will now be discussing the cardiovascular system, and as you can see with this model, is showing you the blood vessels. Okay, uh, we'll start over here with the heart, at the heart, okay, and we can see uh, two important blood vessels that originate from the heart. Uh, first, we have this one here. This is the pulmonary trunk, okay, the pulmonary trunk, which is actually an artery even though it's blue, okay. Uh, it's an artery because the definition of artery are blood vessels that transport blood away from the chambers of the heart. So it is an artery, the pulmonary trunk. Then the pulmonary trunk then bifurcates or splits to the right side this way, over here, bringing a pulmonary artery to the right lung, and then this way, bringing a pulmonary artery to the left lung. So this is the left pulmonary artery, this is the right pulmonary artery, and then this one again was the pulmonary trunk. Now, the other major artery of the heart here, that originates from the heart, is this large vessel here. One of the largest vessels, blood vessels of the heart. This is the, uh, the aorta, okay? The aorta. Now, the aorta is going to actually be uh, much longer than this. It'll come down through the body and give off many branches. All of the branches, all of the artery branches originate from the aorta. The aorta has different segments. This first segment here, this is the ascending aorta. Then over here, you have the arch of the aorta. And then the rest of it that comes down this way, down into the different body cavities, this is the descending aorta. At the same time, the descending aorta will have different segments. We'll discuss the segments as we get to them. Okay, so this is the aorta here. Now, <clears throat> the aorta here at the arch, here at the arch uh, region, at the aortic arch, uh, will give origin to three important blood vessels. One right here, this artery right here, this one just right here, uh, going towards the right side of the body. Uh, this one is the brachiocephalic trunk. Okay, the brachiocephalic trunk. The brachiocephalic trunk will bifurcate or split into the right subclavian artery and the right common carotid artery right here. Okay, so right here, brachiocephalic trunk, right subclavian artery, right common carotid artery. Now, what about for the left side of the body? For the left side of the body, those two arteries actually originate separately. And here you have this one here, originated independently from the aortic arch. This one is called the left common carotid artery. And then here, separately, you have this one right here. This one right here. This is the left subclavian artery. Okay? So, as you can see, there's a difference between the right side and the left side. Okay? Now, we'll use as an example the common carotid artery of the left side, the left common carotid artery, and we'll come up this way, up along the neck, and up here, that left common carotid artery will split or bifurcate into the internal carotid artery and the external carotid artery. Okay? Uh, all of these other arteries are branches of these two arteries. Uh, you can discuss that. You can review those in your book if you'd like. But for the course, uh, it's important to know the internal carotid artery and the external carotid artery. Now, let's follow the subclavian artery. Uh, again, this is your subclavian, uh, left subclavian artery. Okay, you can see there's several important branches from them. Okay. And one of the important branches originates right here on the dorsal uh, surface of the subclavian artery, this one right here, this one right here. That is the vertebral artery, the vertebral artery. Do you have it on the other side as well? Uh, it's not demonstrated with this model, but you should have another one just like that one here as well. Okay? Okay, actually... Uh, Yes, you, you do have it. This is it. This is the 
uh, vertebral uh, artery. Okay, so you have the vertebral artery here, and you have the, uh, actually, this was the vertebral artery on the left side. So vertebral, vertebral arteries. Okay? <clears throat> this little branch, uh, well, we could ignore that for now. Okay? Now, we come down this way along the subclavian artery, and when we get to the armpit region of the body, the subclavian artery then is called the axillary artery. This is the axillary artery. Okay? And then uh, down here along, uh, along the axis of the humerus, along the axis of the bone of your arm, we call this the brachial artery. The brachial artery. Now, the brachial artery then will bifurcate down here in the forearm into this artery called the ulnar artery and on this side on the lateral side we call it the radial artery the radial artery now both of these two arteries down here in the palm of your hands form an arch it's called the palmer arch the palmer arch okay uh, okay so that covers the superior part of the body now we have a few more important branches here we have this long one here. It actually originates here from the inferior surface of the subclavian. And it comes down this way, down along behind the ribcage, like this. It's called the internal thoracic artery, also known as the mammary artery. All of this is the internal thoracic artery or the mammary artery. Now, from this artery, you can see these important branches right here these important branches. These are called the intercostal arteries. Intercostal arteries. Okay? Okay, good. So now I think we can turn this carefully around. We spent uh, considerable time with the aortic arch and the branches of the aortic arch. And now the aorta then descends down the body cavities this way. And we call this part of the aorta the descending aorta. Now it is sectioned into two parts. If I follow an imaginary line above my diaphragm, my diaphragm muscle will be located at my stick level. Above my stick level, okay, we will call this portion the thoracic aorta. Okay? The thoracic aorta. And the thoracic aorta. And then below my imaginary line, which I'm using with this stick here, we'd call it the abdominal aorta. So it's really two different parts of the descending aorta. The thoracic aorta and the abdominal aorta. Okay, good. Uh, very well. Uh, let's now turn it back around this way. And now let's work with the portions uh, in the abdominal region. So we spent some time now with the upper portion of the aorta and the branches of the aorta. Now we'll work down here with the lower portions of the aorta. Okay. Now one of these important branches is a very tiny little artery right here. This one right here that I'm poking at. This was called the inferior phrenic artery. Inferior phrenic will be supplying the inferior surface of the diaphragm muscle. Inferior phrenic. A little tiny one here, so you have to get in there to see it. Okay. Uh, now, a much more important branch than that is this one right here. This is a big trunk. Big trunk. It's called the celiac trunk. You can perhaps appreciate it much easier this way. The celiac trunk. Okay. Good. <clears throat> now, the celiac trunk will actually give rise to three important arteries. First, we have this one right here, this thin one right here. It loops around this way. The artery, again, this artery right here. That one is called the gastric artery. Then we have this much larger one here, thicker, larger, and longer, coming right to this organ, the spleen. So this one is the splenic artery. And then more to the, going to the other side, we have this one right here. This is the common hepatic artery, the common hepatic artery.